Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I'm in New York City at the Jacob Javits Center because we're going to go into Toy Fair 2018. I've never been to one of these before and uh, our objective here is to look for some tech stuff that is maybe geared to kids but perhaps maybe to adults as well because adults like uh, fun entertainment toys as well. So we're going to be walking around here with that in mind and maybe make an exception for Star Wars when we get over to that booth. So let's head on in and see what we can find here at Toy Fair 2018. 2018 for cool tech gadgets. All right, so we are at a booth called Backyard Brains, and I'm about to be um, attached electrically uh, to this uh, young lady here, uh, Helen. And yeah, right. And then apparently. You can see her brain doing that. So, what we have here is a kit, it's a bioamplifier. It's taking the electricity, the small amount of electricity that's in the, in the neurons in her spinal cord. Is it coming out to her muscles? Uh, and when you squeeze your hand, you're starting to see this right here. So this is, this is, these are called X potentials, and they're coming from her brain to her arm. So now what we want to do is, because we can see it on the screen here, we can then put it into a computer, and we're going to send it into your arm, such that when her brain sends a command to her arm, your arm is going to move. So you're going to, it's going to make a copy, and then and a, and a control C, control V, and you'll, you're going to lose your free will, and we're going to pass it over to Helen. Oh, OK. And I hope to survive this. So I've got these uh, sensors here on my arm, and he's going to attach me up to this. Now, what am, what am I being hooked up to? Yes, yeah, so this, this is the uh, this is a little electrical circuit here that's going to be able to connect the what we're seeing on the screen, which is called here electromyogram, and we're going to place the electrodes here, which allows. So if you know, electricity likes to flow through metal. Uh, so we're going to go from one metal source into some salt water here into your arm, and so this is how you make a bio interface. So I'm going to plug you two together, and when I do, you guys will become one cybernetic organism. All right, you guys are you guys are one. So I'm going to, I'm going to this is a little amplifier. So I'm going to turn it off slow. So when you want to, I want you to go ahead and squeeze your hand, like and kind of bring it up like you're revving a motorcycle like that, and just do it every once in a while, and you're going to start feel something here, and do it again. <laughs> so my, <laughs> this is crazy. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yep. Yeah. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, yeah. You you can control his hand. So, just whenever you want to. And you can look away. So, so you don't look and then and you have full control over it. <laughs> so, this this I I is it legit? This is legit. This is legit. My my I are Can I do it back to her now? Is that Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you let your hand be completely relaxed, like you let it be dead, I, I want to feel the weight. Like, if it, like it, all right, there it is. So now what I can do, if I moved her hand, would it move your hand? Could, could I take my free will away from Helen to remove your I would say no because her brain's not controlled. Yeah, so I do it all I want. It doesn't matter. But if she does it, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> does her hand have to move? If, if I stopped her hand from moving... Yeah, just just move. So so try to move your hand, really just move hard. <laughs> it does it again. Even though her hand, so this is called isometric contraction. Her brain is still sending that command, which is getting copied. So even her hand doesn't move, your hand moves. So I'm gonna unhook you now. But so what we do is we take. I'm a PhD neuroscientist, and we started this company about nine years ago. Uh, and what we do is take uh, tools that we use in the research lab, but make it available for the 99%. So we want everyone to participate in the discovery of neuroscience, and we're doing that by sort of like democratizing the tools that neuroscientists use. And so yeah, everything you'll see presented by Backyard Brains is stuff that we use in the research lab, but now kind of designed for kind of kids and, and the general public to kind of experiment with the brain. Very cool, and it and it cool. and it works. And and I, I don't think I have any brain damage, right? <laughs> no, nothing serious, but you, you know, it's exactly. <laughs> How much does all this stuff cost? Yeah, so we our price range is around 150 to 200 bucks. Uh, so this is where. Um, uh, but if you would at a, at a research university, this equipment costs 40 to 80 thousand dollars. So this is uh, quite a significant difference. So we got funded by the. The National Institute of Mental Health uh, to come up with a, a curriculum. So we have over 30 experiments, everything from the human stuff. We work with invertebrates, uh, so like cockroaches and worms, because we can record from their brains pretty easily. And most recently, we're recording from the brains of plants. Um, so that's a bit of a lie. Plants don't have brains, but they do have action potentials just like we do. So. Uh, and so you can find our stuff. We've given uh, four TED Talks on the main stage. Uh, and so 
Um, we have a new TV show coming out in March where we do each each episode is about some DIY neuroscience stuff that we're working on. So anyway, hope you hope you enjoyed it. All right, thanks for stopping by randomly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So one thing I've been looking to check out over the last couple of years is little bits. And what these are are little electronic learning toys that you snap together. And what's cool about these is that you can't mess it up and burn the house down because you can only connect them the right way. There's a magnet on here that will re repel uh, the little bits here. So I'm going to have my friend just uh, build us a little circuit here to show you how this works. So these are ways to learn electronics. We're going to put a dimmer switch on here and we can control that LED light with the dimmer switch, and they have all these different projects that you can do. Uh, now, what attracted me to the booth today is this R2-D2 over here, and uh, Antonio is going to follow me around here. Now, this is a robot, an R2-D2 robot, incidentally, that you build yourself, and uh, you can control uh, him or her, depending on how you want to define it, um, with this remote control here on this app, which is really neat. Now, what they have done here is created multiple missions for the robot. So right now it's configured to move forward and backwards, but they also have missions where you can have its head move, for example, or maybe extend out an arm, and you have to rebuild the robot every time uh, to get those different functions to work. So the kids really have to think about how to connect these pieces together, how to get the motors to work the right way, and uh, really you know work hard to figure out how to make this robot Bot work, and then they have to take it apart and put it back together again to do some different things. Uh, they've added coding now to this, so the app will allow you to uh, actually make a program for the robot to follow after you build the robot. And you can see an example, perhaps, hopefully the reflection isn't too bad there, Antonio, of how something would work here. So in this instance, he's going to start, move forward, he's going to wait one second, stop and play a sound, and of course there's a lot of other stuff you can do and different branching things that you can work into the mix. Uh, this is $99, about $100, which isn't bad actually. I think for uh, the amount of time a kid might spend on it. And then they were showing us some other stuff here. These, they say, are their new uh, lowest cost devices they've produced. And these are kind of like little appliances that kids can build. So this is a uh, night light, very similar to what we just saw at the uh, outset here. So you have an LED night light that you can build here for this little thing. Uh, this is a uh, bubble bot. And what you do is build this little circuit out here. You put this in some bubble soap and it will blow bubbles for you. Uh, this is a little walking thing. These are all paper, by the way. Uh, this is a little walking contraption that you can build to have this little thing slink across the table if you want. And this is a game where you try to get this robotic arm to push a ball through a hole. And they have to decorate these little things and get everything put together. And these cost $39, but they're all compatible with each other. So you could take components out of this and put it into the robot or vice versa. So once you get a couple of these kits, kind of like Legos, maybe build different circuits and uh, have some fun with it. Really cool stuff. We'll have to try some of these things out in the coming months. So here's something that I saw a couple of years ago at CES that's expanded a bit. This is called StickBot, and the last time I saw it, it was mostly this. And uh, what they give you is a little tripod for your phone and some uh, figures that you can uh, maneuver into some stop-motion animation. And the app actually helps you make those stop-motion animations. And they have come up with some new things in the line that I thought were just interesting for kids to play around with. They've got these little sets here. Uh, these are cardboard, um, but you can have like a little farm here with a scene that you can set up. They've got a pirate ship and now they've got uh, a space, uh, a bridge of a spaceship kind of thing as well. So you can uh, get some scenes that are ready built for your stick bots to make some more stop motion animations. And I just like the, uh, the inclusiveness here that you get the tripod, the app is designed to do the stop motion thing, kind of an all in one uh, out of the box experience that isn't all that expensive. So here's a little thing you might have seen before, but they got some new ones coming out. These are called the Tiny Arcades, and they uh, sell for about 20 to 25 bucks a piece, depending on which game you're getting. And they uh, launched with uh, some very familiar games like Galaxian, Space Invaders, Pac-Man, and Miss Pac-Man, but they've got some new ones coming out here, uh, namely Dig Dug, and we'll turn it back on here, uh, Frogger and Galaga, and they are very tiny little screens, sometimes a little hard to control initially, I think you have to get used to them, but uh, what's cool is they are emulating the arcade game, so you're getting the exact arcade experience, and they also replicated the entire uh, cabinet of the original arcade, including the artwork and even the little marquee lights up on them also. These are really cool little stocking stuffers for middle-aged gamers like myself. So if you are uh, looking to get a gift for the upcoming holiday season, you can start shopping now. These are really 
definitely kind of fun, and they are uh, the original game, just in a very small form factor. So gamers of a certain age, like me, remember these little things from Mattel Electronics, and the world's smallest, which is the company here, uh, makes tiny versions of these, just like those arcade cabinets. And I'll switch on uh, this uh, football one here real quick, and you can hear the sound here. So um, this is all it was. It was just this little game with these little lights that would light up to represent a, an American football game. And uh, we used to spend hours playing with these things because this is all we had for portable gaming in the 80s. So just be grateful you've got your your Switch and all the other stuff out there because you could have been playing with this had things not evolved. But really cool nostalgia for uh, those of us that remember playing these games. They're little versions of a game that we all played quite a bit as kids. So us children of the 80s, I'm getting nostalgic here at Toy Fair, might remember Teddy Ruxpin. Well, he's back. Um, this time he's got movable eyes. He's got a screen inside the eyes there, and of course he's talking. And of course, because we are in the 21st century now, uh, there's an app that goes with Teddy Ruxpin that you can read along with, uh, or not, if you want. Um, but uh, it was kind of funny to see Teddy Ruxpin making an appearance again. Uh, he sells for $99, and he comes with a bunch of stories. Now they're selling additional stories as in-app purchases now for you as well. And they have some of these other smaller versions here that don't animate, but um, use some of the uh, IP from the original Teddy Ruxpin days, including his little partner here. And uh, back in the old days, this little guy would plug into Teddy Ruxpin, and they'd interact with each other. They're not doing that just yet, but um, pretty cool stuff to see uh, the 80s making their way back into the the 21st century. So we're taking a look at the Ozo bot, and this is something that has a good amount of depth to it, actually. So this is a little robot, and it's programmable, and there are two ways to program it. Right now, he's just kind of running around on his own. Um, they have a uh, thing where you can draw lines on a piece of paper, like you can see here, and the Ozo bot's going to follow the path. And then in these little squares here, you can color different uh, combinations of colors. And as he runs over that, it will make him do different things. So you can see when he goes across this block here, he's going to turn around and do a little uh, 360 motion there and continue onward because that pattern of colors uh, is the command to have him do that. And then when you're ready, you get into more advanced stuff. They've got an app that attaches to it. And you can do a lot of coding here as well. You can see how complex some of this stuff can get. Uh, he's got a lot of sensors on him. He's got proximity sensors. He also has uh, the ability, of course, to see uh, optically on this uh, track here. So there's a lot that you can do uh, as your kid gets better at this coding activity here. And it really looks pretty cool. It sells for 90 bucks. There's an online component so your kids can share their uh, programs with their friends. And there's a leveling up process to, uh, you know, to kind of show off what you've been able to do by unlocking more commands and whatnot. Again, a lot to this one, the Ozobot. So we found this little guy at the UbiTech booth. I love Star Wars, so anything Star Wars often catches my eye. This is a little Stormtrooper. They're about $2.99, so they're a little, little more expensive than some of the other stuff we've looked at. But um, they, they're pretty cool. They've got some augmented reality things that you can do with them. Uh, you can also go on patrol, and he's got a facial recognition feature built in. So if he sees you walking around the hallway, he'll leave you alone. Um, but if it's something or someone he doesn't recognize, he'll stop and uh, give an alert and uh, interrogate them. He can also say things. So they. Uh, they say a couple of words and phrases and whatnot. So pretty cool little device here. He's uh, a little cute stormtrooper that can patrol your house. So here's something really cool that we found. This is called Squishy Circuits, and Antonio is going to pan the camera down here. Uh, these, this colored uh, Play-Doh essentially is conductive. So when I take this uh, little thing here and put it inside the Play-Doh, the light lights up. The white stuff here is an insulator, so it separates those two sides there, and we're able to uh, complete a loop here and get this going. Now, what's cool, though, is they've got a circuit inside of this uh, battery pack here. It's got four AA batteries. Uh, if I short it out, uh, it won't heat up the batteries. The light just kind of goes out here, as you can see. So it's uh, full, you know, pretty foolproof in the sense that the kids won't start any fires or anything, and they can learn a little bit about electricity. They've got some other things here, like a uh, fan that I can plug in here, so I can just grab it like so and uh, give it a little kickstart there. And we've got a fan now rolling off of this. And they have a couple of different kits here that they've got on the table, so uh, you can see different colored lights and everything. Prices range from about $10 to $60, so you can uh, get different kits and combine things if you want or uh, whatever you want to do. Pretty cool stuff. Now, I always know I'm going to find some cool stuff in the startup areas of these shows, and we've been finding a lot of neat things here. This is something that I was uh, hearing about that I haven't seen in person yet. This is the Piper Computer Kit. And what you start with is uh, this box of parts, which includes a Raspberry Pi, one of my favorite little mini computers. And you build a, effectively a science kit or a, or a learning kit for yourself to uh, get a screen attached here. And eventually, you get this, what you see here. 
uh, after you put everything together. And uh, right now we're in this uh, little Minecraft thing that they've got. They've got a custom version of Minecraft that um, basically has you wire up all these buttons here to the GPIO ports on the Raspberry Pi. So you do all this building and then you add things that you can do inside of the game here. So if you're into Minecraft and you want your kids to learn how to program and do some electronics, you can start there. And then as part of the deal here, they also have a coding component. And what they're doing here is showing us there's a uh, program running here that's turning the uh, pin number 22 on the Raspberry Pi on, waiting for a second, essentially, and then turning it off and repeating. And what they have done here is not only coded this and have basically have the kid coded, I guess, but they also have a breadboard here that you're wiring up to the Raspberry Pi to uh, have this action take place. So they're learning some basic electronics and some basic coding here with a computer computer that they assembled themselves. So there are only a couple of videos on my channel that have done more than a million views, and one of them was the Power Up, which is a uh, little thing that you can uh, put on top of a paper airplane to basically turn it into a little drone. You can control the paper airplane from your phone, and they have a couple different versions. This is the one we looked at. They also have a more advanced one with an onboard camera here. This is called the Power Up XFPV. And they have a new one out here that's going to be a lot of fun. This is the Power Up Dart. And you can see it's got these little landing wheels on it because it can take off and land on its own. So you don't have to throw it first. It has a more powerful motor. It does acrobatics and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So it's going to be kind of fun to play with this. They've uh, dramatically improved the app that they have. So there's a lot more tutorials, both on how to fly, but also how to fold up these paper airplanes in the first place. Because you do have to make the paper airplane that you're going to fly. Uh, the product is essentially essentially the electronics uh, portion that you see here. So we're going to try to get this one in because this is a fun little thing that I think can uh, really teach a little bit about avionics while having some fun flying around a paper airplane with your phone. So this is called the Augie, and this is another device that you can learn to code with and uh, have it achieve tasks. And right now my friend here is uh, setting up this augmented reality path uh, using coding here. Uh, they're dropping these uh, different movements into this, and the objective here is for Augie to capture that donut over there. So they have to uh, get all these things in the right order, drag them over there, and then execute the command, and Augie will, uh, in aug augmented reality, drive over to the donut and eat it. And once you achieve that objective, you go on to more and more complex things, and eventually the kid can uh, just do a free play thing where they can build little environments on the floor uh, and have these little code snippets to control control the Augie around the house. Augie is available for $199 and you can get them now. So that is going to do it for this first and only dispatch from Toy Fair. We walked around the entire show. It's a big show, but not as big as CES, so we could get it all done in a day. And we found all the stuff that was kind of relevant, I think, for this channel. There's a lot more to see here that uh, isn't mostly toys, of course. And uh, to some degree, I think it's probably a sign that parents are looking for non-screen activities for their kids. So there's a lot of hands-on things, a lot of mechanical things in that uh, learning category that we saw, uh, but not so much on the techie side of things. But the things that we did see uh, were all about teaching kids programming skills and working through all of the concepts that they need to learn uh, to solve problems with code. And it was kind of neat to see a lot of that here. And you saw some of that as well. I think by far the coolest thing we saw was that uh, thing that they hooked up to my arm and that uh, woman was actually controlling my arm with her hand. That was kind of crazy. And uh, that was a neat learning tool too. So uh, definitely uh, check that one out if you can. They've got a bunch of other products in that line, including the ability to read plants and all this other stuff. So any anyway, event, it's been a great Show. We're going to uh, see what we got here on footage. I think we're going to have a longer dispatch than I anticipated, which is good for you all. And let me know what you thought of this uh, visit to Toy Fair 2018. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.